Hey everyone, thanks for clicking and logging into Sunrise Extra on a Wednesday. Yes, it is only Wednesday for a very long week for a lot of people. Um, we are doing this old school format. Hey guys, how when, are you? When is the last time someone uttered the words, man, this has been a short week? I mean, <laughs> it has right. been a long week, but my goodness, we've had a year of long weeks. 2020, oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, Rod, we're going to let you uh, take over and uh, direct this uh, Sunrise Extra ship. Actually, uh, what we are going to do, as Nina mentioned, is uh, have a conversation <laughs> again with our viewers because we've gotten away from this a little bit, and for good reason. We've had some terrific guests on with us here on Sunrise Extra the last few mornings talking about everything that's happening, happening in our country and has happened since last Monday. It has been nine days now uh, since George Floyd died in police custody in Minneapolis and we continue to see the protests and I think there was some people who thought okay uh, now that we're back into the work week we probably won't see protests like we did over the weekend. Mm -hmm. We are seeing some different styles because it hasn't been as violent thankfully the last few nights but the size of these protests has not gotten smaller in fact it's been bigger. Uh, at some points in the night, I know uh, last night, Monday night, or pardon me, not last night, the night before, on Monday night, some people are estimating anywhere between 10 and 20,000. Uh, a similar sized crowd last night in the heart of downtown Portland. So we want our, to ask our viewers, you know, what have you been thinking about? What have you been talking about these last few days? Whether it's with family members, with your kids, with your neighbors, because I think we've all had to do a little soul searching mm -hmm. uh, these last few nights in these last couple of weeks. And so where do our viewers stand mm -hmm. is the question right now. Yes, and um, we posted this um, as we usually do kind of early on our Facebook page and we have gotten some really thoughtful comments on both sides. Um, let's throw a few of those up there. Um, and they start with Gwen Roberts Ingram. And she said she's proud of the peaceful protesters. A change must happen in the hearts of people and in police oversight, and it must last. Those who are in it to riot or loot need to be stopped. They tarnish the reason we protest and stand up and speak up. Hold each other accountable. Maybe next protest be held downtown as a community guardian as well. Um, the next from Patty, and this is a strong response. She says she is ready to move away from Portland. Her job ends here next year and she can't wait. Her out of state family will not visit here, fearing it's a violent place, lack of leadership. What is the rate of police brutality in Portland? We understand the injustice of the black and brown community. Open up the counties from COVID now. If people can congregate in the thousands for hours on end in these protests, the COVID message is lost. There have been few positives. Some police and protesters holding hands and having a conversation. Mm. Let the buses and trains run so the rest of us can go back to work and provide for their families. And I know there's another one. Diana says, there are peaceful protesters and there are violent thugs. The media need to take a hard line distinguishing between the two. The government needs to give the police the resources and green light to enforce the law, round them up, convict them, so when they break windows, assault officers, or steal, there are consequences. They won't stop until we make them stop. Without this, the message of George Floyd will be lost. What do you guys think? As always, this is the beauty of Sunrise Extra. We love having you guys weigh in live with us um, at over 200 people watching on Facebook. Um, let us know, are you guys having to talk about this with your kids now? You know, they're out of school. Um, a lot of schools, even virtual learning is now over for the older kids. Um, our, um, one of our managers, Paul, was saying, you know, his daughter is a teenager, she's in high school. She's on TikTok. I don't, I'm not on TikTok, so I don't know what it's all about. But, you know, there's a lot of videos and there's tons of misinformation online that really needs to be looked at. And a lot of times, you know, people just read it in a snap second, right. believe everything is true. So he's kind of been working with her on, you know, some of these facts are getting twisted in um, even just American history, you know, what has happened. And so I'm, I'm curious. My daughter's too young to talk about this. She's obsessed with Beauty and the Beast, so I am not there yet. Yeah, those are uh, Beauty and the Beast conversations are easy I, to I'm have, loving yeah. those right now. You know, Drew, what about you? I mean, I don't want to put you on the spot, but your boys are, what, 12 now? Have they, uh, thankfully, you know, it's been <laughs> oh, kind of sunny. I know, this is an awkward topic, you no, guys. You know, and, and something you said right there um, can upset people. Because if you say it's an awkward topic to talk about, some people It is. For that. three of us white people, this is an awkward topic. But this is why 
we have to do it. And that's, and that's been a lot of the advice, you know, from people is have those awkward conversations. I'll tell you what, I'll share a story. Then Rod, if you want to chime in, you certainly can. Um, you had a, a guest on, or we played an interview, I should say. Uh, you did the segment, Nina, in our Sunrise show, but it was really just a segment tossing to an interview that Kristen Severance did yeah. uh, with Kali, who is the executive director at Kairos PDX. And she is, uh, that, if you're not familiar with Kairos PDX, it's an education-based nonprofit. They run a fantastic school uh, here in Portland, giving some great educational opportunities to underserved kids in our community. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, Kali says something during that interview with Kristen that struck me, because I think the easy message to give to kids is that there are no differences between human beings. We're all equal. We're all the same. And she said, you know, kids are not born racist, right? Uh, they don't come out of the womb racist. But kids do recognize differences, even at a young age. So to say that we're not different is not really a truthful statement to kids, because kids will look at you and go, what are you talking about? We're different. There's different in appearances. I'll share a story to kind of explain what I'm talking about, because this was embarrassing. Uh, and it happened about, I'm going to say nine years ago, when our kids were about three. Okay. We're in Wilsonville. Uh, we're at like a, a, a park, Memorial Park, if you're familiar with that area. They have a little play structure there and a little water feature, so it was summertime. And again, our kids are like three years old, the boys are. And the parents are off to the side and kind of letting the kids do their thing in the water. Me and I are just hanging out talking, and we see our boys are having a great time. They're both sitting there in their little swim trunks, and they're smiling, laughing, and they're pointing at one point. And they're pointing and laughing. And they're pointing and laughing at, at a young black boy and at one point I'm thinking, like, what is the commotion going on over there? Mm -hmm. And the boy's smiling back at them. I mean, they're not talking. I mean, they're three years old. They're not having a conversation. He's smiling. They're smiling and laughing. I mean, they're having a ride. They look like two of the happiest boys you'll ever see. Yeah. So I get over and like, what the heck are they? And I hear one of them, one of our twins at three, saying to the other boy, chocolate. It's chocolate. Yeah. He's saying that, right? I'm because like, oh. kids notice difference, right. you know? They I'm definitely like, oh my do. gosh, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like mortified. Yeah. I'm like, what other parents are close enough to hear what they're actually saying? I'm like, scoop up one, scoop up the other. My walk back to me, she's like, what are you doing? I was like, we have to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I felt so uncomfortable. But the fact is this, they do see differences. Mm -hmm. And we're different, right? Whether it's, we're talking about uh, skinny people versus bigger people, short versus tall, black, white, yellow, whatever the color is. So to tell your kids, hey, we're all the same is not true. But to tell your kids, we don't judge people on those appearances. Mm -hmm. None of them. I don't, my kids, they don't really have a problem, it seems to this point anyway, with race. But sometimes I don't like the way they describe some of the bigger kids in their class. They'll say, uh, uh, this uh, fat kid in our gym. Whoa, yo, you, you can't speak like that. Yeah. Right? You can't judge people like that. It's just not nice. Yeah. Um, so whatever the case is. I think the message is to say that we are different. It's okay to be different. We don't judge people by the differences in their opinion. Get to know somebody and base your opinions on that. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the kids understand that at 12. And that's what Kali was saying in her conversation that you guys can watch on, on our YouTube page. But she said, yeah, kids, don't, don't tell them, I guess, um, you know, don't see color because they do. But tell them and teach them that, you know, that's what makes us awesome, you know, is, is all of our cool, fun differences that we can all learn from each other with. Rod, what do you think about this? I know this is, this is touchy territory to kind of weigh in on, but how well, are you doing? Here, here's what I would like to know, and, and maybe you two have a, an opinion on this, is simply, do you really think in your heart of heart, are we going to see change? And I ask the question, because I am 58 years old. I mm -hmm. was born in 1962. Every now and then, I don't know if it's every few years, I don't have the, the correct timetable, but it's like, here we go again. Something right. horrible has happened, one human being did to another. And we have the demonstrations and all the things that go with those. You can put school shootings into this uh, category of here we go again. Mm -hmm. This time we've got racism leading to the death of a man uh, in the here we go again. And I am sick and tired of so often we don't see any change. Now, one thing we had in our newscast today that I think is a great idea, and it was on that graphic that we showed in Sunrise of possible of recommendations that the NAACP would like to see. Uh -huh. And on that graphic, a citizen's review board for accountability for police departments. Our yeah. Pat Doris did a story in Sun on our Sunrise show this morning that talked about how many cases have been filed, complaints against police officers, specifically, I, I believe it was in Portland, and, and this may not be fair, but for me as a viewer, seeing Pat's story for the first time, 
my takeaway from the story was a couple of people got their hand slapped. Some people decided uh, this is such a mess. I'm going to retire or quit. But in that story, unless I missed it, there wasn't anything about this is not acceptable. You are no longer going to be with this police department. And there's a so, lot of reasons I mean, for that. Me, the unions, count, yeah. yeah, unions are very powerful. The accountability is here. Uh -huh. <clears throat> accountability seems to be here and not here. So I am, and I tell you, it's sad. If I had to put $20 on, are we going to see change or not? My $20 would go on not because that's the history. Right. I want that. I want to be incorrect. Mm -hmm. I pray that I'm incorrect. Here's what's not going to happen, But we Rod. need to see some change. We're not going to have a perfect world ever ever yeah. that's not going to change and i know that and i and, and i know you know that too and i was thinking about this myself driving in today how uh it doesn't matter what the the topic is whether it's homelessness right now the topic rightfully so is racism um, uh, you mentioned school shootings they're not going away entirely unfortunately i don't think they are if you ask me about my heart of hearts but what you can't do is roll over and go oh the hell with it it's not going to it's not going to change it's not going to it's not going to get fixed because if you do that then they will get worse so you try to control it, you try to make it better, mm -hmm. and, and maybe we can get to something that is um, nearing perfect, but it's never going to be. And I was even thinking, like, when it comes to, we talked today, but how can you help? You can make a donation, which in some ways sounds a little bit, I don't know if trite is the right word, but you're sitting at home, oh, I'll just uh, dial up nonprofit X, I'll donate uh, $25, I helped. But that actually does make a difference because I think about it from like a cancer standpoint. Right? If we just uh, rolled over 50 years and go, man, this cancer thing is freaking impossible to beat. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, good luck if you have it. You know, we're praying for you. No, we have researchers doing their best mm -hmm. to come up with solutions for cancer. They, that research is funded by people like you and I. I can't figure out how to cure the cancer, but I can support those organizations with a donation. That funds the researchers. They do the work. And guess what? We are getting a little bit ahead on cancer. It is not necessarily the death sentence that it once was. So I don't know if that's a fair comparison. If someone would look at that and go, how are you comparing cancer to racism? But my point is yeah. that it's whatever it is in this world that is not great or perfect, we have to keep working towards making it better. Mm -hmm. and, and Drew, that's well stated. And I do want to say, I do believe, and I thank the people that are giving their time to do meaningful protests, the people laying down on the Burnside Bridge, the meaningful protests, an image that I hope will last many, many years in, in our minds, because those people are sending a strong message that this is not okay. Mm -hmm. For those people in positions, specifically of, of police departments, um, Something's not okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this is one of those deals where one time is too many. What having one yeah. bad egg is too many. Right. Mm -hmm. And and thank thanks to those people making such a bold visual statement that this is not okay. And hopefully that message is going to get to the people that can actually make change. One yeah. person can make a difference. And I, I've thought about this too. And I don't know if you guys have it all. Obviously, you had the officer who has been fired, who is now charged with third degree murder and manslaughter, uh, involved in the killing of George Floyd. And uh, there were three other officers involved. None of them did anything. We all know that. I think a lot of people are waiting to hear what's going to happen to them. Did anything yes, they to were stop fired. it, you mean? Yes. Yes, uh -huh. they didn't do anything to stop it. They stood by and watched. Mm -hmm. um, I think to myself, man, can you imagine if one of those officers reacted the way a lot of us would have liked to have reacted, which is mm -hmm. to go over there and grab that officer who was kneeling down and pull him off of George Floyd. Like, you know, what a different scenario. And we would have said, man, that guy right there just made a statement for the entire country that none of us, even people on the force, are going to stand for that kind of behavior. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, of course. But I guess I'm going back to it, it can come down to one person making the difference. We had a, a couple of yeah. really bad eggs in that situation. And, and I don't know how you get rid of bad eggs out of the pack. I wish we had all great doctors, all great teachers, all great broadcasters, all great police officers. Unfortunately, you, sometimes you get bad people into those positions. Mm -hmm. We just have to figure out a way to. It's just the legal process. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these, you know, cops, sometimes they get fired, but then, you know, the legal process or old precedent, and they actually get their jobs back, you know, because um, police unions are extremely powerful. They're protected by a fantastic They're protected, union. and if, you know, an officer, you know, even last month or 10 years ago did the same thing, and it was just the slap on the wrist you were talking about, then that precedent carries forward into the future. And, you know, then, then you have attorneys arguing, well, this guy didn't have anything happen to him, so my client, you know, has to get his job back rightfully and legally. 
And that's what's been happening. So you have to go through and change those police contracts, which Portland police are going through right now. And they always ask, we do have this independent um, review board and a lot of people, and, and we get the emails here at work of like, the police are every once in a while going through their directives, it's called, of how they handle crowd control, how they handle, um, you know, like, uh, mental health 911 calls of somebody in a mental health crisis who may be having a weapon or something. We've seen, you know, people unarmed in a mental health crisis get shot and killed in Portland. But it, it's up to the public to go to those meetings or go to those board, you know, reviews. And a lot of times there aren't people there. And then, you know, when something happens, everyone's upset about it. We do have some great comments mm -hmm. do. Um, coming in. Now. And um, Du Han earlier said the change needs to be within you first, and then you could change other people. Lisa Kaplan says, great segment conversation, Team KGW. Thanks for challenging yourselves authentically. Lisa, this was very scary for us to go on here this morning and talk about it, but it is important. Um, let's see, there was another one I saw. Uh, Judy Walker, my nine-year-old grandson, whom is biracial, told me he thinks all cops are racist. He's nine. You know so what? sad. How do I explain to him this is not the case? I love when our viewers start conversing with each other. Through mm -hmm. your screen, right? And there are hundreds of you watching right now. We were hopeful, Nina, Rod and I, that we would start this conversation today and wouldn't just be the three of us uh, out here by ourselves. And we so appreciate you yeah. all jumping on board. And I know thousands more will see this throughout the course of the day today. So. Gwen replied to that very comment that you just brought up from Judy, Nina, and she says, Judy Walker, my son, talking about thinking all cops are racist, uh -huh. she says, Judy Walker, my son has faced this many times, even in Portland being stopped for driving while he's black, or he's black and he's been stopped for driving. Right. Uh, there has to be better training, she says. There has to be oversight for police. But she also wants to point out she firmly believes there are good police. She says, it would be wonderful, Judy, if your grandson had an opportunity to meet one of those great police officers, talk to him or her. And wouldn't it be great for the police to talk to your grandson and listen to why he feels the way he does? Mm -hmm. I've thought a few times, and I haven't said his name, and I haven't heard it said, and probably won't necessarily, but uh, do you guys remember a Portland police officer by the name of uh, Mark Zalawi? I don't. Oh, okay. Z-Man, right? Yes, uh -huh. yes. He was the man that uh, led to what is known as the Z-Man Foundation. Uh -huh. And, you know, long story short, unfortunately, he lost his life helping uh, someone on the side of the road. It was just uh, an accident while he was doing good to someone mm -hmm. who had gotten, uh, whose car broke down on the side of the road and he was hit by another vehicle. But they started a foundation in his name. And what I've learned about Officer uh, Zalawi was he was the best communicator. He was uh, terrific at outreach. He was a white officer uh, patrolling uh, a lot of the streets that are primarily black in the city. And everyone knew who he was. <laughs> uh, the, the good people in the neighborhood, the people that were getting in trouble, they all know who Officer Z was, yeah. the Z-Man. And uh, there's an example of a guy who was doing it the right way. And it, it, I'm sure that he, if he were alive and he would see this today, he would be so upset because he did all this great work to try to knock down some of those barriers, to try to tell the people in those communities that are, that are uh, people of color that, hey, I'm a white officer, I'm a police officer, but I'm here for you, not mm -hmm. against you. Um, and there obviously needs to be more work like that by those police officers. I always give credit. That's not a job that I would want to do. They put their lives on the line every day when they leave for work. Um, and it's not always appreciated. Yeah. And yes, there are bad ones. Yeah. And I would hope we get rid of all of them. Yep. I want to ask you guys, what did you think about, um, because there was kind of two sides yesterday. We had, it was called Blackout Tuesday, where on social media um, there was a big movement with the hashtag Blackout Tuesday. Don't post, you know, regular um, whatever content that you normally would. And I'm sure everyone saw that, you know, people were posting just a black square. Um, and if you scrolled through Instagram yesterday, particularly on Instagram, it was just all black squares with various captions from folks. Um, and then there was the other side of people who, um, a lot of people in the black community who were saying, I know, you know, this is meant well, but, and it's only for one day it was, but it's also kind of stopping down the messages and the resources and the phone numbers and the virtual chats that we should be having about this issue. Um, and I saw a lot of my friends, you know, do the black square post. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had, Drew, I'm just, I'm just gonna go there. You know, the, the first day we, uh, on Monday, we had Reverend Edie Mondanay 
who is a well-known black leader here in Portland. Great, he was on this um, live stream with us. And he gave the simple advice of two white people of go and you know, make a black friend, meet a black person and start talking with them. And, and that's, you know, it sounds great nice. and well. And it, it, but I think it just like simplifies it too much. And it comes off to me even as like, that just seems hollow and in, ingenuous. I don't even know if that's Disingenuous, I have Disingenuous, you. thank you. I got your back, um, verbally yeah. speaking. <laughs> I don't know. And so you're stuck in this. And then um, the next day we interviewed Cameron Witten, who is yes. a black activist, Cameron great guy. He ran for Metro Council. You know, was that yesterday? He was in my head yesterday, and uh, I'll explain why in a moment, but go ahead. Yeah, and so he was saying, oh, after the George Floyd death, I had you know some, some friends I hadn't talked to in a long time. They called me up to ask how I was doing. And Drew, you and I were both like, oh, that's, that's yeah, nice of nice. them. And he took the totally opposite stance pretty vehemently saying, no, where have they been this whole right. time? Why haven't they checked in on me just on a random Tuesday to see you know, how I'm doing? Um, we called him out on that, and he explained further that what his point was, I got it, it was a weird way of getting there in my opinion, but I understood what his point was that we need to be in touch with our friends all the time, not yeah. just when things reach this boiling yeah. point. And if you have black friends, you don't just reach out to them necessarily the day after. Right, and it's like this. condescending and, and patronizing and but stuff. But I still think it's yes. nice when someone reaches out to you to see how you're doing. Sure, yeah. So it's just, it's a weird middle where I just get so, I just, you know, want to be very respectful and, do you know what I mean? Yes. Do you yeah. guys feel well, you that can, way? You can, you can yeah. it doesn't matter what you do necessarily, sometimes you're going to be uh, criticized or accused of doing the wrong thing, even if it seems right in your mind. And that's all you yeah. can do. You're doing what you think is right. You know, we, go, go ahead, ahead Rod. Rod. I was going to say, we've had some other leaders that to stay on that same drift, if you yeah. will. Talk about just a simple, when you're on the sidewalk, say hi. Because I think this is something that is evolving in our society um, and has been for a while. That is, you know, our TV station, when we all go to work at the TV station, I haven't been there in months, but it's right by a high school. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a Starbucks there, so people know what I'm talking about. And mm -hmm. often I'll walk down to the Starbucks. It's a couple blocks. And you almost always, if you do it in the morning, pass high school students yeah. of all, all color. Doesn't matter, white, black, Asian, whatever. Um, and it's almost like these kids are now being taught to keep their head down. And no matter who is approaching, no matter what the person looks like or shape, size, whatever, and to just walk quickly by them and not engage. Hmm. And yeah. I'm like, that is not a good thing. This right. is a time where we need to be taking a moment to just make quick eye contact right. and say, hi, good morning, hi. It's just Humanize that one people. second. Yes. To me, that's yes. a big deal. Director and Brian Matthews said that's maybe a downtown that. Portland thing. You know, he's calling oh, it's it a downtown everywhere. thing. I mean, think about when you get into an elevator. Well, listen, you know, you look down, you look up at the numbers. Let's not end it this way. I know yeah. we have to go. I, I can give you a positive story to end with along those lines, Rob, because this was a group of young people. So uh, if you're familiar with Highway 43, mm -hmm. you can take 43 from downtown Portland all the way out through Lake Oswego, through West Lynn to 205. Mm -hmm. So I'm on 43 yesterday. Uh, I'm on my way home and I, I hit that spot where you start to drive through Lake Oswego. And as soon as I get into there, there's a group of like four young people, I'm guessing high schoolers, but maybe younger, like ninth, 10th graders. And there's on the corner, one of them had a Black Lives Matter sign held up. The other one said honk. So I did, I'm, you know, laying into that horn, honk, honk. And they were like so happy, right? They're like, yeah, cheering and give me the big smile. And I'm smiling. And I thought that's, we need to see more of that, yeah. right? When you see that, they're out there delivering a message. They're getting a positive response. They're happy. I was happy with all these protests and demonstrations yes. could be like that. It'd be pretty cool. Recognize one another. OK, we did it, you guys. We did it. I'm proud of us. <laughs> Keep talking about it. We're not that special, but we're proud of ourselves. Yeah. We got to go. But thank you so much for weighing in. We'll see you tomorrow.